Well, welcome to Winter in North Florida. This is Dave from the Department of Wacky Ideas. So glad that you were able to uh, join this uh, video. I hope that you find it entertaining and maybe informative. The recipe that I'm going to show you today makes either a, uh, a liqueur or a bitter. And there's different definitions for what each are. But in generally, a liqueur is a alcoholic beverage that's been sweetened um, and often sweetened to a high degree. A uh, bitter is, from my perspective, a an unsweetened uh, alcoholic extraction of some sort of botanical. And the botanical we're using today are these uh, these lovely uh, these lovely kumquats that we have. Uh, thanks to the kindness of my friends and the uh, assistance of my lovely wife, I have about two gallons of kumquats to use today, and I'm going to use these kumquats for what I think is their highest purpose, and that's to make an alcoholic infusion of them. So what I'm going to do today is uh, I'm going to show you how to process the kumquats. We are going to, um, to chop them up a little bit, and then we're going to put them in a jar, and we're going to uh, infuse them. This uh, generic neutral grain alcohol, it's called. It has no flavor other than that of the alcohol itself. This particular one is 153 proof, so uh, you know it's not for the faint of heart. But the higher the proof of the alcohol you use in this extraction, the um, the more flavor you'll get out. And at the end of the process, uh, you can either uh, water it down with a little water, and then it becomes what I would call a bitter, or you could use simple syrup or a, a, a syrup made out of something like monk fruit and erythritol to um, to you know, kind of tamp the alcohol down and to make it a little sweeter. It's up to you. Um, I will probably do both because I like it. Uh, I like both of them. Now, uh, what you end up with is a, uh, when it's all done, you've strained everything out and you've mixed something into it, either water for a bitter or some sort of sweetener to, uh, to cut it down to say maybe 80 proof or so. Use math. Ratios and proportions. <laughs> this is where math class comes in handy. Um, you end up with something like this, and there's just a tiny little bit of, uh, of um, limoncello from last year, and this, I'm out of the kumquat drink. Ah, delicious. Well, you can make uh, bitters and liqueurs out of all sorts of different things, and the difference, you know, is liqueurs are sweetened and uh, bitters aren't. I use all sorts of things to make the, uh, to make both bitters and liqueurs. I've used uh, every kind of citrus you could possibly imagine. Uh, I've used... Um, bay leaves, ginger. Ginger makes a lovely liqueur. I've used cranberries um, and I've used uh, turmeric. <laughs> but my all-time favorite, I think the one that has gotten the most uh, uh, appreciation from friends and neighbors who've tried it has been black walnut. Now I would love to show you how to make uh, a black walnut liqueur. It's really delicious. I have a little bit left, I think, uh, somewhere in the house. Not exactly sure where. But uh, unfortunately, I lost my source for organic black walnuts. And it's very important whether you're using kumquats or some other kind of citrus fruit or, or uh, some other botanical that they be organic. It's really important. You do not want to throw uh, fruit into alcohol that has a coating of something nasty on the, you know, on the surface or inside it, like a, um, you know, like a fungicide or an herbicide of some kind or an artificial color, which they spray on some citrus fruits that are produced commercially. You want the pure organic fruit and uh, getting it from a neighbor who has a tree or from your own tree is probably the best way. Uh, kumquats are kind of pricey if you get them in a store. Uh, they come in little pint uh, baskets for several dollars and around here. Uh, in the stores, but um, you know, if you have someone with a tree and it's dripping with fruit, and you got an empty five-gallon bucket, and you offer to bring them some of the completed bitters or liqueur when you're done, you can probably make a deal. So that's uh, that's what I do, and I hope that you'll uh, consider doing that too. Today we're doing the first part of the process, which is uh, making an infusion, and an infusion is a uh, basically a soak where you soak the fruit, and we'll show you how you process the fruit first in just a second, but you soak it in some sort of alcohol. Uh, what I use um, are neutral grain spirits. This is a 750 milliliter bottle, 153 proof. Uh, that cost about approximately $12 US to, uh, to, buy, this, uh, to buy this bottle. Uh, neutral grain spirits are not the same as vodka. Uh, vodka 
uh, is a lower proof. This is 153 proof. Vodka is usually 80 proof. And vodka often has flavoring in it of some kind. And, and it's made out of different things. You can often taste the underlying grain or vegetable in the vodka. We want none of that. We want pure alcohol, as high proof as possible. Now, uh, 153 proof, as I believe, as high as you can sell neutral grain spirits or any spirits uh, here in Florida. If I uh, drove 10 minutes and went across the state line into Georgia and found a liquor store there, I should be able to find 170 proof. But, um, you know, for me, uh, this works uh, well enough and uh, it's cheap and easy to use and easy to get here in, in my part of the world. So today we're making the infusion and we're going to process the kumquats. I'll show you how to do that. And uh, we're going to fill up a, uh, a container with, uh, with, the, um, with the resulting mix. It's going to sit in a dark closet for, I don't know, several months. really depends. You can always go taste a little bit with a spoon when you want to see how it's doing. And we might even taste a little bit of what we do today before we put it away, just, just to be sure. You know, it's, uh, it's important to taste as you go. Now the kumquat should be ripe and not green. You do not want a green kumquat like this. You want a nice bright orange kumquat like this. Uh, when we picked yesterday we were kind of in a hurry so we uh, we just picked them a little bit indiscriminately and uh, so I'll have to go through the kumquats and make sure that uh, that the green ones don't end up in the uh, in the final product. So the best way to tell if the kumquats are ripe, is to slice a little piece off the uh, off the kumquat and uh, and taste it. Tastes good. Well, here's how I process the kumquats. Once the kumquats are clean, I cut the kumquats in half um, through the through the meridian. This does not have to be exact. You do not have to be perfect about this. All you're trying to do is just have these empty shells, these empty, these empty kumquat shells. And um, there's a little bit of the pith. You don't have to worry about the pith. The seeds don't taste good. And I think my, uh, you know, my mom and my my grandmother, who are um, my grandmother was from um, from. Calabria, where uh, you know the making of liqueurs is a, uh, a big deal, and uh, you know she would tell me that it's not good to eat fruit seeds because fruit seeds have, are poisonous in, in her in her belief, and uh, also she thought that they would give you appendicitis to uh, to eat fruit seeds. I don't know if that's true or not. You know, not definitely not a uh, gastroenterologist, but uh, but I don't think that eating seeds is a good idea. Anyway. Uh, and they don't taste good, so I, uh, I scoop them out. I roughly chop them in a food processor. I use the pulse button. I could do it with a, I don't know, a knife, or I could you do it with a, 
with a, um, a grinder or like a food grinder or food mill or something like that. Um, I find that doing it in the food processor is very easy and uh, by controlling the amount of, uh, of uh, cutting I do in the processor using the pulse button I can get the, uh, the result I want which is a uh, not a paste. You don't want this to go become a paste. You want it to be individual pieces of, uh, of orange peel, of, of kumquat peel, but you want them to be small and because you want the most surface area possible to interact with the alcohol then you get more extraction. That's the whole deal. The a 11 cup uh, Cousinart Prep 11 Plus that my friend uh, Tina was kind enough to give me. So you don't want to fill it up too much because that will definitely cause a problem. Now we're just going to set it on the pulse mode. And we just want to break this down so that it's little pieces but not a paste and that's about right right there. Uh, if there's some big pieces it's okay. If there's some smaller pieces it's okay. We just want to have as much surface area as possible. We're going to remove the, uh, the pulp we've done from the processor and uh, get as much out as we can. Well actually I'll take the I'll take the cutting blade out to make sure that I I uh, get everything that's underneath the blade and put it into the into this gallon glass jar. Because if we leave any in there when the next load of shells goes in it'll Turn it into a paste, and we don't want a paste. We want a we want a chunky we want a chunky jar of fruit that uh, that will uh, have enough surface area to absorb as much of the alcohol as we po as it possibly can. There we go. And we're going to go do the rest of it. I'll I'll be back when it's all processed and uh, show you what's next. Once you put them in the jar, and the more you put in, the better. At least, you know, half the jar filled. I would say fill it up all the way. Okay, well that's it for this batch. Let's take this off. Take this out. Take out the blade, and let's put the rest of the chopped up. Uh, you know, is this perfect? Yeah. There's no such thing as perfect when doing this kind of this kind of uh, food prep, this kind of cooking. Although we're not really cooking, we are soaking. Um, and there we go, with my industrially clean hands going into this jar. Do you cook with your hands? I do, as long as it's they're washed and clean and ready to go. I don't think there's any problem with it now. If we worked, if we were in a commercial kitchen, we'd probably have to. Uh, be using gloves or something like that. I don't want to lose any of this. I'm going to go ahead and take uh, some grain alcohol and uh, pop the top on a bottle of this grain alcohol and use it to clean out the uh, the uh, to clean out the uh, the container and go ahead and put the rest of that one in and. Uh, one of these jars, so we're about maybe a third to a half full. Okay, two more of these. And uh, just for grins, we'll put a, a third bottle in. So this is about $36 worth of, not counting state tax, about $36 worth. We're not going to fill this up all the way, but we'll do about this much. We're going to go ahead and give it a, uh, a little bit of a stir, just a tiny bit of a stir. There we go. Looks like there's one or two seeds snuck in. I'm not too worried about that either. Just want to go ahead and make sure that all the that all the botanical material in this jar gets um, gets mixed up and gets uh, 
get alcohol on its surface. And we'll be we'll be doing this over time a couple times in over the next uh, over the next uh, you know few months. I'm just going to try a little tiny bit to see what it tastes like. No color in it yet, but just a tiny bit. And it has very little orange flavor in it yet. It's just uh, basically the taste of the grain alcohol, which is not not a wonderful taste. All right. Well, the next step the next step is to uh, put a piece of wax paper over the top of this, just to kind of protect the uh, insides from this you know pretty funky lid I have for it here. I uh, might need too much wax paper. No, it's going on. Um, just to uh, keep the insides clean, to keep the rust from the top out. And, uh, you know, that's pretty much it. We're going to take this now and uh, put it in the closet, let it sit for, um, you know, for a few months. Every once in a while, we'll give it a shake or a stir. And uh, hopefully, uh, we'll be able to report back in a little while, in a, in a month or two, uh, how delicious this... Uh, this kumquat cello turned out to be.